Hi, welcome to another video. There are two kinds of people in the world. One who pays a ton of money to a company to get ripped off and then gets rug pulled. While there is also another kind of person who sees it coming and knows that it will be a rug pull. So, he doesn't switch. I was one of those who never switched to Claude Code because I knew that it was unsustainable. And that's exactly what happened with Claude Code, Cursor, and almost everything else. But there are also some people like me who wait for cheaper alternatives. And that's what happened with Claude Code. We've now got a better and way cheaper alternative than Claude, with a model that is actually good, which is GLM Coding Plan. I recently talked about why GLM Coding is really good for coders looking to switch away from Claude Code. It's cheap, coming in at just around $3 or $15, depending on what you want. And the model is currently one of the best if you want a good AI coder. I have fully switched to using the GLM 4.5 model these days, and it is one of the only models that has allowed me to switch away from Sonnet. It does come with some issues, like it doesn't always one-shot tasks. You sometimes have to go back to it two or three times in order to make something work. But it is really good at taking back your feedback and implementing fixes. This is something a lot of models struggle with, which makes them unusable. But this one does it pretty well. For the downsides, I have tried adding some MCPS and rules in order to make it perform better. So, if you're like me and using it, I wanted to tell you how you can basically maximize the performance out of the $3 you'll pay. I highly recommend the $3 plan because it's literally something most people can afford, and you can get a ton of value out of it. So, let's get into it and talk about how you can maximize the performance out of that $3 plan. But before we do that, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Micro SaaS Fast. Dreaming of launching a Micro SaaS or AI side project, but wasting weeks setting up auth, payments, and SEO? Check out Micro SaaS Fast, a Next.js boilerplate with Clerk, Stripe, Resend, PostgreSQL, and AI instructions that cut hallucinations by 90% for vibe coding. Easy backend integration with Python, Node, and Go. It is built and used by a CTO who helped 50 plus founders to launch SaaS in the past year. You can save 50 plus hours and actually ship faster. Check now. Link is in the description. Now back to the video. To start, many people, even those who are subscribed, don't know that ZAI used to only have access for Claude Code at first, like when I covered it back then. But they have now recently expanded access from Claude Code to almost all kinds of coders, and it works with almost anything now. Official support docs include Roo, Klein, Kilo, and even open code. To use it, you can refer to their documentation, but generally in something like Kilo, which I try to use, you just set up your API base URL and model, and you should be good to go, which is great. Now, the first issue that I see with this is actually pretty simple. For each bug or almost any feature request, I put it in the architect mode and ask it to make a plan first. I then ask it to put the plan in a markdown file. This allows me to make sure that it is on the right track, and it can also read the plan file whenever it thinks it has deviated from the plan originally made. Similarly, I also have some rules for it. I try to keep it super simple and not lengthy, because context is limited, and it's always better to keep as little stuff as you can in your context. I really don't get all those spec-driven setups. They've never performed well for me or my tasks. So, I'll just tell you. Keep rules and use the architect mode built in. Anyway, in my rules, I ask it to make sure it plans for every edge case when planning. Do the task as efficiently as possible. Don't overcomplicate tasks. And when planning, always keep a markdown plan file and refer back to it as needed. I also ask it to always keep an eye on the terminal windows and linter for properly generated code. These are the rules that I have. 
The simpler you keep it laid out, the better results you get. For MCPs, I have it limited to Context 7 for documentation fetching. It works better if you have fewer tools for it to go through. So, this is one quirk that I found. Another thing that is a bit costly, but boosts performance, is the Morph Fast Apply option. I think this is just in Kilo code as of now, but it makes GLM coding plan a bit better. Morph Fast is basically like a model fine-tuned for edit applying. The search and replace for code is handled by this fast model instead of GLM. Since it's fine-tuned just on applying code and extremely fast, it makes difference applying errors much less frequent. If you use Kilo code, you can enable this in the settings. It costs about a dollar per million output tokens and 80 cents per million input tokens, which is not bad since it only deals with code chunks. On a good day, I can stretch it to 3 million, but nothing more. I know it costs more than the whole plan, but it's actually worth it because it makes the difference applying errors far less frequent, and I found that to be better. Another thing I want to touch upon is that this model isn't multimodal, which can be a bummer when you want to give it more context. Well, you could use something like Gemini 2.5 Flash for free through the API to transcribe a screenshot into a prompt and then use that. But GLM also has another model, basically a variant of GLM 4.5 Air, which is already great. This variant comes with multimodality. It's called GLM 4.5 Vision. It supports video, images, and everything else, while being super cheap at just about $0.6 for input and $1.8 for output. So, you can just keep like 5 or 10 bucks in the GLM API, and then quickly switch to GLM 4.5 Vision for Vision tasks, and then switch back. Or, you can also use Gemini Flash, which is great too. Another thing that I'm yet to test extensively is codebase indexing. But with the small tests I've done, it seems to improve performance a bit, although it sometimes rots the context. So, try it out and see for yourself. That is majorly about it. It also now works well with open code. So, you can build out shell scripts to automate things, or use it in GitHub workflows, which is a great use case. I use it a lot in GitHub workflows, and that's also great. I think it's a different feeling when you stretch out a single dollar and bring the best out of it. I know a lot of people would say that it's a Chinese company or whatnot, but honestly, I don't care. Anthropic and GLM hold the same position for me, but GLM is better anyway because their models are at least open source and they haven't rug pulled. So, yeah, there's that. That is majorly about it. And since I was using it, I thought I'd tell you guys how you can stretch the $3 to get as much juice out of it as possible until they start to hard rate limit. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.